Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will show you how to import data from Excel lists. I have two lists here, one very simple and one not so trivial. So I will show you two different ways of importing data. Of course, you can do this from the UI also, but now the point is that I'm showing you how to do it with PowerShell. So first of all, we need to create the lists. I've already created a function before here, which creates lists with all just the way I want them. So I'm just going to create those two lists. First of all, I'm going to create my app here. And the title of that is going to be um, countries. And the type is just going to be a generic list like that. So now I create that. And then uh, I create my app again, and this time the list name is going to be customers, and that is going to be a contact list, right? There we go. So those two have been created now, just the way I want them. So let's go out here to, uh, to uh, the PowerShell SharePoint site, and there we go, Ten countries and customers. They are both created the way I want them. This countries list only has one single column that we care about, it's the title column. So we're gonna add items by using the add PNP list item commandlet. And we're gonna add items to the list, which is called countries. And then we're gonna add values. And the values we're gonna add is in an array of key value pairs. And uh, that's gonna be in curly brackets like that. So now I type in the key value pair. First of all, I type the internal name of the key of the column that I want to add it to. It's going to be title. And then I put equals and then the value I want to put in there. So that's it. That's what we have to do in this simple scenario. Now we just run that. And there we go. A new item called Argentina has been added. Right, so now I could, of course, just copy this code uh, that we have for each country and then add them like that. But of course, I, I prefer doing it in a function, so I'm going to do that function add country, and the parameter is going to be a string, of course, and it's going to be the country name like that. And then I'll just take this function here. And instead of typing in the title here, I'm going to just add that parameter there. So country name, right? What I can do, first of all, I need to run this bit of code just to introduce this selection. So now I can do the next one. Next one is Austria. So then I do add country and just do Austria like that. That works also. And there you go. Austria is added. So now use Excel, of course, to type in the rest of it. So I'll just do a function here, which builds that string for me. It equals and the string would be add country. And then the A column there, right? Add country and country. Let's see how that. If I widen that, yeah, there we go. Now it looks right. So we've done Argentina and Austria. Let's just copy the rest. Just paste that in there. And now we can run all of that. And it's going to add those items. Now that took about five minutes to do, which of course I could have done much, much quicker in other ways. But I'm showing you PowerShell techniques here. So I hope you bear with me. Now the next one is going to be more complex because it has a lot more columns, of course. So first of all, we need to match the column names that we have up here with the columns, the internal names of the columns that are in SharePoint. So we're going to do that. Now, as soon as this is done, we can go out and check it that it's being added here. Working beautifully. Great. So we can actually go ahead and remove this code now because we're not going to be using that anymore. We already have it in Excel, of course, so that's good. We have an add country function there. Now, 
to add more complex data, I would recommend that you save your Excel file as a tab delimited file. That's what I've already chosen here, text tab delimited. So I'm going to save that now. The reason I'm using tab, not comma, is because there's, there actually might be commas in the, the names of you know, people or, or businesses. So tabs usually is safer. So that's what I would recommend. All right, it already exists. I want to oversave that. That's, that's fine. Good. So let's go out here where I've saved it in my documents. And there is the file. So I'm going to go to the home tab and copy the path. Now to get data from a text file, there's a very good commandlet for that. And it's called get content. It simply takes the path to a text file. And it outputs, of course, text. So I'm going to put that in my variable, call that text. So text equals get contents. All right, so I'll just get that. And as you see, I ran that now by F8. Um, just to output here, and we'll see that we got the right thing. Text. And there it is. The next thing I want to do is tell PowerShell that this is separated by tabs. And of course, it's rows that we're dealing with. So I'm just going to declare that variable rows. And then I convert the text, convert from a CSV, it's a CSV file. And there I can specify the delimiter. And the delimiter for tab is a string, of course. And it's, it's this one, the backend hyphen, I think that character is. Anyhow, that is the delimiter, that character, whatever it's called. And um, the input object that I want to be working with is, of course, the text that I just read in. That will be in the description of this video, whatever that character is called. But you see it here, and it's also in the file, of course. Let's look at this rows object and see what that has. And as you see, now it looks very, very structured. Even better, if I get the first one, just do row like that, equals a rows number zero. This is, of course, an array that you have here, the rows object. If I run this line now, I have the first object in this array of objects. So rows is an array of objects that I've found from the text file. The row is the first item now. All right, so let's look at what row is. So row, as you see, is an object which has properties. So it has the property custom ID, and that property has a value, alpha key. The customer name is a property. Alpha is the, uh, the value of that property. So now we can start working with that object. Now the next thing uh, with those objects, and of course, when we're working with arrays, what we usually do and what we prefer to do, this one we're actually just a comment so that we get to the first object. What we're going to do next is, of course, loop through that array using the for each statement. For each row, row in rows, then we're going to add a new item to SharePoint, of course. There we go. And um, now I want to, of course, add a new item again. Add PMP list item item. And we're going to add it to the customer list, customers list. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to add values, of course. And the values, we're going to build up those values because we don't want to build a long, 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 long string. We're going to build up a, an object. So I'm going to create a new variable here called row values. And that is going to be the collection of key value pairs. Let's see, we just create that, uh, that object. It needs to be recreated on every row. And then we add the key value pairs to that. So we do row values plus equals, which means that we're adding a new item to that. And then we do the title again, like we did before. If we know that title, and that's going to be equal to, and now we have the current row customer name, right? And then we take that values object and we put it there, of course row values sorry my mistake we need you see there i got an error there showing that this is not the correct syntax and it's not i need to put that symbol in front of that also now it's going to work so now 
let's just run this once on the first row and see if it works yeah now it's adding the first item in that list there we go now it's there so let's refresh and there we go we have one customer in the list and that customer is called alfred's footekista actually in the last name column so that's not probably what we want so the title field of the customer list is used for the last name so that's the next step we need to go through of course is find out which internal names are in this list so let's do that let's get the pnp field in the ui of sharepoint of course a column is called a column but in the apis it's always called a field those are the same thing they work the same way but you have to get used to that naming convention there so if you go into the command add-on here show command add-on and search for column you can set default column value so it actually is there in some places but in most cases you're working with fields so let's get the fields from this list which is called customers there we go and just get those out there we don't need this anymore so let's take that away for now and now i have all the, the fields and their grids and most importantly their internal name so scrolling up here getting all of that and i'm just going to copy and paste that into notepad now so i can have it here and compare with so let's put that to the side and that to the other side so there we see all the columns here let's clear that out the columns that we have to work with are of course the row those are the ones right so we have the customer name the first name and the last name so we're actually going to be using the last name there instead so let's change that now last name contact last name beautiful like that and then we can have the so that's that the, uh, we can of course skip columns here also because what we're doing now is just going to do more of these rows we're going to add more key value pairs so let's do the next one here the, the customer id for example let's do that one that's the next one we want to use customer id where do we want to put that which column do we want to put it in the id is might be a good idea but that's the built-in one for sharepoint so we can't use that one of course but let's see what we have here the company that's the one we should use for company so let's do that one company the customer name So I didn't find a good one for customer ID, so let's skip that one. And we've done the last name for the title. Let's see here, we have the last name, we should have a first name also, of course. There it is, the first name, great, let's do that one. First name, and that would be the row contact first name, good. And of course, these values that we're getting now are the columns that we had in Excel. So let's do these. We have the last name and the first name. And we let's have the phone number or the email. What do we have here? We have the email. That's an easy one. So let's do that one. And email, the internal name for that is email. All right. I think you have the point of this. Of course, we can continue to do all the others also, but that wouldn't really be of any teaching value. So I will skip that. And also, it's the video is getting long. So let's just run this now. Now, first of all, let's clear out what we already have. This one there, and delete this. And now let's run this. There we go. And now it's adding Anders, three low. Refresh. There we go, they're being added. The first name, last name, company, and email address, everything is working. 
So I think you have the principle here. Uh, I showed you some interesting stuff here, hopefully. The ability to add items to a list, add PMP list item. I also showed you how to save as a tab separated file, which is the format I recommend and read from the, the tab separated file into uh, an array object. I showed you how to loop that object and build a row values here object or an array of key value pairs that I use to add new items to a SharePoint list. So this of course is much, much slower than doing it by hand, but it's a way to automate it. And hopefully you'll learn some PowerShell techniques in this. Thank you for watching this demo.